Hey, what's going on guys? How is everybody doing? So as of right now in real time when I'm recording this, the servers for Genshin Impact are actually down. So I couldn't record any gameplay or anything in game if I even wanted to. And frankly, I don't think that I can get any 1.3 content out uh, for today's video. So what I thought would be kind of a cool idea is to ask you guys to ask me questions. As of right now, you know, you guys don't really know a lot about me unless you've kind of been hanging out with me over on Twitch, which you stream there three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So check us out there if you haven't already. Uh, there we kind of just, you know, hang out. Uh, we talk about me a little bit sometimes, you know, I go into a little bit of story time. Sometimes we just talk about food. Sometimes barely any time we talk about the game. Honestly, it's a lot about food. But anyway, that kind of sparked the idea to do a little bit of a Q&A video so that way you guys could just get to know me a little bit better uh and honestly i thought it'd be kind of fun a lot of you guys have been saying that you like longer videos uh you like my voice how it's like calming or whatever and you treat it like a podcast so i figure you know what maybe we can just uh treat this like a podcast maybe make it like a little mini series if you guys like this style of video let me know and we'll continue on doing it um with that being said what you guys can do and help me out with this video is to help me beat that raid boss which is the youtube algorithm and i want you guys to put down below in the comments a question actually as opposed to a comment so i actually got quite a few questions from you guys that are food related which uh, if you guys don't know, I'm kind of a foodie. So what I would like you to do is leave a comment below asking me a food related question. I do want to do more of these QA videos in the future. And I think it'd be kind of interesting to do a food related Q and a, so if you have any food related questions for me, leave them down below in the comment section. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start with your questions. And we're going to start with the really hard hitting questions. The ones that just like are really deep thinkers. And the first one comes to us from Sean and he asks who would win the fight Paimon or Timmy? Well, Sean, it is my scientific opinion and there is uh, no counter argument to this. It is in fact, Timmy, if anime has taught us anything, it is that latent energy or anger, uh, tends to be destructive. Now, with all you guys going about and killing Timmy's pigeons and his ducks, that boy is raging. So, Paimon, sorry, no chance. Timmy wins that fight 10 times out of 10. Okay, but seriously, we're going to get into, like, actual more questions so that you, you guys can get to know me a little better. So, first up from Miss Fortune Z. Uh, they ask, I'm not nosy, so I'll ask something simple. What's your age and where are you from? Well, uh, I am 27 years old, and I know they didn't ask this, but my name is Elliot. For those of you guys who don't know, as I said, 27 years old, and I am from Maine uh, in the U.S., which is basically Canada for people who don't know where Maine is. Uh, very, very northeast of the United States. Uh, basically, you probably thought it was Canada if, if you didn't know where Maine was already. So continuing on from there in terms of like the, the introductory questions, kind of, we have one from Xenon asking, what do you do for a living and would you prefer to do YouTube full time? So as far as what I do for a living, uh, shocking, I know I am in video production, uh, for my day job, I do work as a commercial producer and editor. Uh, I do, uh, you know, filming for different commercials, editing for different commercials. So yeah, I mean, this video production is kind of, you know, it's something I've been doing for several, several years, several years. Well, like six, six or seven years now. So it's kind of something I'm used to. I also do some wedding videography on the side. So for those of you guys who've been asking like, wow, your video is looking really crispy. Your lighting's looking really good. Well, that's why I have the gear kind of left over from my side job. And that's why I have, you know, all the, the nice gear, the nice camera lenses, lights, all that stuff. It all comes from that business. So, uh, that's why I have those things for, you know, being such a small channel. But that being said, kind of off topic, I think that regardless of channel size, you should always strive for quality. It doesn't matter how many eyes are on your videos because those first couple eyes, super important. Every, every eye matters, right? Every ear matters. That's what I said. And as for the second half of that question, would I actually prefer uh, to do YouTube a full time? Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily a uh, like a, a prefer because I haven't actually experienced YouTube full time uh, yet. Uh, for those of you guys who have also been wondering, uh, no, YouTube is not a full time job, nor is it, well, I guess, technically it's a part time job. Like, I mean, I get a little bit of kickback from Google AdSense, but it's, it's not enough to even come close to like allowing me to do this full time. Uh, but would I like to? Um, yes, 
Um, th this has been something that uh, I actually didn't think that it would actually be a goal of mine, to be completely honest. Um, but uh, in recent times, at least in the past uh, couple months, really, it's like once I started monetizing the channel, which was back in, I believe, December, it was kind of around the time. If you guys remember, there was um, like posts going around that YouTube was basically saying that they were going to um, monetize channels or at least put ads on uh, videos, regardless of if the creator did or not. But if they did, uh, they basically the creator wouldn't get the kickback. It would all go straight to YouTube. And so at that point, I was like. Well, like if YouTube's going to be kidding, like ad revenue anyway for my videos, I might as well just slap ads on because like, you know, like worst case, you know, you guys are kind of I'm assuming everyone is kind of used to seeing ads at this point anyway. I was kind of keeping them off the channel just because like, you know, for the revenue I was going to be making, which wasn't much. It was just to add a little bit of convenience to you guys so that you didn't have to either have an ad blocker or, you know, if you don't, you just didn't have to see an ad. But because YouTube was going to slap an ad on my video anyway, I was like, all right, I'll just slap them on. Now, ever since then is kind of when I've been keeping track of, um, you know, the, the growth of my channel, because up until that point, it had been per pretty slow. Now, this isn't to say that this like sparked any growth in my channel, but uh, if you guys have been here since then, I did put out a video around that time. It was about like a, a farming tool and that video kind of blew up uh, right now. It's sitting at around 200,000 views, which is easily uh, my most viewed video. Second most goes to the the Razer Maximizer Damage video, which I believe is sitting around 150K views right now. And other than that, like the other videos, my peak is around like 10K, but usually it's a couple thousand. Um, but with that first video, I definitely sp saw a, a spike in subscribers. Um, and with the with the Razer video, I also saw another big spike. Other than that, I see very consistent growth. And as I've been saying this whole time, when you guys ask me, you know, this is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Uh, I'm not someone who is hoping for like explosive growth overnight because that just tends to lead to um, uh, an unstable environment. Uh, the metaphor I like to um, compare it to is if you have two different buildings that are standing side by side, uh, one was built in, let's say, 15 days. The other was built in a year. Which are you going to feel safer going inside? You have no information about um, the crews who built it. You have no information about any of the structure or anything. You're just told you can go inside this building that was built in 15 days, and you can go inside this one that was built in a year. Most likely, people are going to choose the one that was built in a year. So uh, not saying that like this channel has to last a year or anything. That, rough numbers, but basically that's my point, is that I would rather you know, go through and be able to, you know, like make errors when we have a small community just because it's uh, less damning. Like if you explode overnight, things can just kind of unravel because you don't know how to you don't know how to manage a channel that big. I'm getting I'm getting away from the point. But basically, yes, it is a goal of mine to turn this into a, a full time job. I have been uh, look, I've been really, really enjoying what I do here, uh, to be completely honest with you. Um, it is not something that I expected to really like because just because of the way I am very, uh, uh, I'm a very quiet and shy person, quite honestly. Um, but as it stands right now, the best part of my day is when the workday ends so I can start the stream. Uh, I'll be completely honest with you because for, for a while, for, the, for those of you guys who have been with me for a while, you know that I used to start my streams at 8 p.m. EST and then... After a while, I was like, ooh, this is kind of good. I'll, I'll push it up a little bit. So then I started going with like 7 p.m. ESD. Well, now we're up to like between 5 and 5.30 because I just literally just like couldn't wait to start the stream. Um, so, you know, it is definitely something I enjoy. It's something that, um, you know, like the the character guys that I put out and the team building guys, like those, those do take a lot of time. And because I don't have a lot of time, uh, they come out a lot slower than I would like to because I, I would like to have a guide for every character. But in order to do that, not only do I have to record all the footage, write the script, voice it over, um, do all the editing, which can take anywhere from four to eight hours just on that front. Um, but I also have to do the research. Like some of the characters that I've been doing are characters that I do have experience with. Right. So like Razor, I've had to do uh, a couple different times because I did him so early. You know, just it's a process of learning. You're not going to get everything right the first time. Um, but there are other characters that I do have more experience in playing, like, you know, Diona and with someone like Zhao, you know, no, I'm not going to know everything right off the bat, but I'm not going to also dump out a God on you like day one or day two. Uh, it's probably going to come either the, the next week after it releases or 
potential i don't want it to be the week after that um but i do want to make sure i get as much information accurate as possible and you know all that research and gameplay and stuff it takes a lot of time and when i you know work full time it's something that i can't actively do as much as i would like so if i could get this to a point you know basically my goal is i would like uh, I think uh, possibly an achievable goal, but it might be stretching it a little bit is with by next calendar year. I would like this to be a full time gig. Um, do I think that I can pull it off? Yes. I think that, uh, you know, I have started a business of my own kind of with the with wedding videography. So I do have a little bit of experience there, but by no means am I like a, a savvy business person. But, uh, you know, if, I, I think that if, if you want something bad enough that you are that you will be willing to go for it and get it. Um, and I, I think that I, I do have that drive. Um, I've already started looking at, like, how to potentially, you know, make this a full time gig. Um, because, you know, I from what I've been hearing from you guys, you guys dig the content. You know, and if I can find ways to make the content better or be able to pump out more content at the same quality, I don't want to drop in quality. So I'm not necessarily saying I will pump out more videos in order to or not in order to, but in sacrificing quality. Um, but if I have more time to make videos, then I can pump out, you know, maybe one or two or maybe do like an extra video on the weekend or maybe do longer streams. Maybe that's a place to go. Um, but with more time, I can just make more content for you guys at the same quality or better than I'm currently doing. So uh, to answer the question, yes, I would like to do this full time. Um, and I'm actively working on how to make that a reality. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answers that question. Next up from Jeff Stream, we got a whole bunch of questions here, some of which I've already covered. But is being an editor a good job to pursue? Are you single or in a relationship? How old are you? When did you start your YouTube channel? And do you watch anime? If so, what animes are you currently watching? So we did actually already answer how old I am, but in terms of am I single or in a relationship, I am currently single. Is being an editor a good job to pursue? It is and it isn't. I I mean, I enjoy what I do, uh, but at the same time, it is kind of location dependent. Dependent. Uh, especially if you want to do like high end production, unfortunately, you do have to move into kind of a more uh, urban area, you know, like New York, LA, Chicago. Those are like your big ticket places. But of course, there you're doing like really high end. Of course, you can do like editing and videography, you know, just at your local news station or something like that. It's not going to be super creative, it's going to be very linear. Uh, by that, I just mean, you know, you're not going to do like a lot of graphics. It's literally going to be like you have a bunch of video, cut it to what your producer tells you to cut, and then you ship it off somewhere. There's not a lot of creativity there. It's just very much like just cutting and splicing. Um, but in terms of is it a good job to pursue? Sure. I mean, there's not a lot of uh, vertical progress. So when I say that, you know, like if you're in a company and you want to get promoted through the ranks and eventually become, you know, like a manager or a VP or I mean, that's pretty high. But, you know, you, you get kind of what I'm saying. Um, being an editor doesn't really have those steps. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's just going to like freelance work and then freelancing for higher paying clients is more your vertical growth. So uh, I would say if you're kind of a go getter, you can probably do pretty well with editing. But if you're someone who kind of just wants to get through it, uh, at least where I am, you know, you're, you're not going to be making big bucks, but you can certainly get by. Uh, when did you start your YouTube channel? So I started my YouTube channel in July. I believe it was July. It was definitely the summer of 2020. And uh, the reason I did so uh we'll actually get into a later question but as for their last question do you watch anime if you do what animes are you currently watching uh i do and i don't i've taken a big hiatus from watching anime not uh, for anything like intentional or whatever it just like i go through waves of things that i enjoy um sometimes when i do get into certain things uh, I go very hard and I just engross myself in them and then I get kind of burnt out. So that's kind of what happened uh, the last time I was watching anime. Um, but uh, what am I watching now? I'm currently going through a show called Baki. It's on Netflix. Um, I just to get into it, I just needed some like silly. I like fights. OK, I like fighting anime. This one's a little silly. Uh, if you if you've ever seen it or seen it on Netflix, it's basically just these overly macho guys just kicking the absolute crap out of each other with very weird martial arts. 
Um, it's not the greatest. Like the story is uh, nonsensical at best. But if you're just looking for some people beating the absolute crap out of each other with their fists, it's not bad. It was something to kind of get into it. So uh, I do watch anime, but not all the time. It's not like a regular thing, especially right now. I just don't really have the time to do so. I would love to. Um, anime is a, you know, it's one of those styles where uh, I think it gets a, a bad a bad rep by a lot of people. You know, people who, I shouldn't say it like that, but like obviously people who like anime really love anime, but for people who are outside the genre, they just see it as children's cartoons, right? But anime has a very different style to it and meaning behind it, unlike Western cartoons that a lot of people that I know are used to, right? You get like your your Pokemon, your Yu-Gi-Oh, your even I'm not it's not really cartoon, but I'm going to include it like Power Rangers, stuff like that. Obviously, it's just kind of like Saturday morning fun. And while you do have that in certain um, anime shows, man, they go a lot deeper sometimes. And it's it's um, yeah, there's definitely been some people that I've turned on to anime because they didn't exactly know what it was. Their first experience was actually a convention. We have a, a local convention here that is anime related and uh, that we had to go and shoot for, um, you know, the station, the station that I work at. And they were very uh, surprised at what they saw. They had never been to a convention before and there was a lot of cosplay. There was a lot of, um, you know, just board games, video games, which is not really out of the ordinary. Um, but it, it was a, a culture they had never experienced before. And they were very much under the impression that, you know, oh, it's going to be a bunch of nerds. and going to be a bunch of... Mm. Which, I mean, no matter what you get into, whether it's like sports, racing, you know, whatever it may be, there's always going to be people who are, who fit the stereotype and don't fit the stereotype. Um, so once we went through that whole process, like, let me introduce you to something that you might enjoy. So I first showed her, um, your name, which she loved. And then I showed her attack on Titan, which is obviously a very far extreme, uh, from your name. But once she started, you know, getting into it and understanding what it was, uh, she realized that it was, uh, very different from what she had previously thought. I know that was not the original question. I went on a tangent. We will probably get to a lot of those. And, you know, from what I've been hearing, you guys don't mind that. So, yeah, that was my little tangent on that. So, next up, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this name. Qu Quadri Hilal. Uh, what do you do when not playing Genshin Impact? Well, uh, the answer would have been a lot different if you asked me before uh, a couple months ago, because uh, basically before Genshin Impact came out, not a lot of anything. But now when I'm not playing Genshin Impact, I'm either working or I'm working on the channel. Um, so as it is, you know, I work nine to five. When I get out of work, if it's a Monday, Wednesday or Friday, I go directly to stream. And from there, I'm basically streaming until nine or nine thirty p.m. my time. And then once I get out of there, it's like, all right, I either just want to watch a TV show or I want to uh, just browse YouTube or I want to make dinner most of the time because I haven't eaten yet. Um, but yeah, so I don't really have a lot of time those days. And then on the off days, which are Tuesdays, Thursdays and the weekends, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are editing days. So as soon as I'm done with work, I'm editing uh, Wednesdays and Fridays video. Saturday's the same deal. I got to edit Monday's video. Um, Sundays... Usually I go out and hang out with some friends. We just watch TV. Uh, it's been football season, so we've been watching football. Uh, the Super Bowl is going to be fantastic. If you are a football fan, I am personally a New England Patriots fan, which not so great this year. Technically, we still got Brady in the Super Bowl, so we still kind of got that for going for us, even though he's you know with the Bucks. But uh, but we also got Patrick Mahomes to root for, so it is going to be a great show. Um, but besides, you know, all that like typical stuff, uh, I do love to cook. I don't cook as often as I would like to. Um, a lot of it is just kind of because my my time, a lot of it is uh, being used up by by this YouTube channel. Uh, it's a lot more work than I intended. But yeah, if you come to any of my Twitch streams, you'll realize that I, I quite like food. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, besides that, I like going home to see my parents because uh, they have two incredible dogs. Uh, we have two dogs. We have a Bernice Mountain Dog and we have a Newfoundland and they are big and fluffy and they're big old goofballs and I love just hanging out with them. 
The next question comes to us from Glass Luxury, who just asked all the important questions, and I'm gonna try and answer these as best I can. If you know anything about me, which that's the whole purpose of the series is to learn more about me, but from all my videos, if you figure this out yet, I am not great when it comes to picking a favorite. I always am going to try and justify picking multiple options, so I'm gonna try my best to actually answer these, but we have favorite album of 2020, Favorite book, favorite video game, favorite artist slash band, favorite movie of all time, favorite documentary, favorite streamers or content creators, and lastly, favorite food. Okay, so starting with the first one, favorite album of 2020. I am not a big listener of albums. Normally, uh, if I'm listening to music, it's just like individual songs or I'll find a band that I like and pick like one or two songs from them. So I'll kind of mix that with the favorite uh, artist or band. Um, I could actually probably, you know what I'll do? This is a little bit easier. I'm going to go through uh, my Spotify playlist um, and go over uh, some of the stuff that's on it on my like recommended or not recommended, but my regular playlist, what I normally listen to. I feel like that's going to give you guys a better idea of kind of like what I like to listen to. So uh, let's see. So we got like Best Friend by Yellow Wolf. We got The Search by NF. Uh, quite a bit of Falling Reverse. So we got Losing My Life, Popular Monster, Drugs, Carry On. Parasite Eve by Bring Me the Horizon, You and Me by Killboy, uh, Cold by Nefex, I think it is. Um, what else do we have? Nothing in the Story by My First Story. Um, what else do we have? Resentment by Day to Remember. Um, let's see. Youth Division by Fit for a King. We have Gray Street by Dave Matthews Band. Um... Ephemeral by Intervals, also Automaton by Intervals. Uh, let's see, what else we have? That kind of gives you an idea of what I listen to. Quite a bit of I Prevail. I Prevail is one of the bands that I do really like. So we have like Scars, Lifelines, Alone, Bow Down, Hurricane, Stuck in Your Head. Um, one of the basically like one of the bands that I listen to pretty much everything, which is very far off from everything I just listed, is a band called Home Free. They're an acapella band uh, that does mainly. Um, country content um i know country turns a lot of people off they do they do do some like pop stuff as of recently but a lot of stuff that actually got me into them was they did a lot of like early 2000 country which is what i listened to a lot as a kid and still do i do have a country playlist that i listen to it's all kind of like early 2000s so you know you got like alan jackson tim, uh, tim mcgraw kenny chesney um oh who we got travis tritt dirks bentley lone star uh, Rascal Flats, Zach Brown Band, who's a little bit more more current, Brooks and Dunn, uh, all the stuff that I listened to as a kid, which is kind of just like a, a flashback to the past, you know, a little bit of nostalgia. Been listening to that recently. Uh, favorite book? Oh boy. Um, favorite book would probably have to be. I mean, I don't read a lot of books. Um, going for something that's fiction. It would probably have to be one of the Harry Potter books, but I haven't read them in a long time. Um, Harry Potter was my favorite series growing up. Uh, I would cruise through those books in like a day. The The second they came out, I was like in the store reading it from the time I was in the car going home until I finished, which was usually around like three o'clock in the morning. Um, another book that I would recommend, it's not, I mean, it's nonfiction, it's a cooking book, but it's called uh, Salt Fat, Salt Fat Acid Heat, Salt At Facet Heat. Salt, acid, fat, heat. Uh, one of those. It's a book all about like literally breaking down the four like main elements of cooking. I haven't actually finished it yet. I've gotten pretty close, uh, but it's very good if you're into cooking. Uh, favorite video game. If I had to pick one, uh, in terms of like your, well, there's no real typical video game, but I'd probably go with The Witcher 3. Uh, the Witcher 3. Or Skyrim. Skyrim isn't necessarily one of my favorites, I don't think. It's definitely one that I've played the most. I had so many saves on my on my 360 playing Skyrim. Good God, I played so many hours of Skyrim. Witcher 3 is definitely like one of my favorites, though. Absolutely love that game. Um, there's a game that had a little bit more impression on me, though, which we'll, we'll get into later. Favorite movie of all time, um, usually I don't pick. I usually just say Lord of the Rings. And if people ask me which one, I say yes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, b besides besides the trilogy, because Lord of the Rings is my favorite trilogy, and I, I will not pick. They're like my children. They're all the best. Uh, besides that, Gladiator. Gladiator is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, 
I think it's just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. It's one of the only movies that makes me cry at the end when he does a little like wheat walk. Uh, God, that in the music just, I don't know. It, it gets me every time. Uh, favorite documentary. I don't watch a lot of deck documentaries and not a lot come to mind. I mean, the, the two recent ones that I've watched were uh, Tiger King and the, um, the Jeffrey Epstein documentary, which is not a, like, I mean, it's a good documentary, but about a bad subject. So I, I mean, I guess those, I don't, like I said, I don't really watch a lot of documentaries though. Uh, favorite streamers or content creators. Um, wow. You got me on the spot here. So my viewing habits are kind of, uh, sporadic. So I have a lot of subscriptions. I'm actually like scrolling through right now. And a lot of these people, the thing is like I subscribe, but then I kind of like get out of a phase or whatever it is that brought me to them. And I end up stop watching them. So I'm going to give you guys kind of just like a couple that I've been watching recently. Um, or at least ones that are kind of in like my regular rotation as of right now. So, um, a lot of times, like the consistent people I watch are actually for ASMR just to like help put me to sleep. Cause it's just relaxing and it's, um, it depends on what the ASMR is. Cause some of it, uh, is definitely not for me, but, uh, the more tame stuff tends to put me to sleep. So, um, GB ASMR is one that I've been listening to for a long time. And I'm guessing that if you're at all listening to ASMR, uh, you probably know who she is. She's, I think I'm pretty sure she's the biggest now. I think for a while it was, uh, what's her name? Is it, uh, Taylor, Taylor Darling? She just like exploded out of nowhere. Um, but I think GB's sur surpassed her now. I think she just hit 3 million subscribers, which is incredible um but also not intended to be asmr but gemini tay she does uh minecraft videos and i don't know what it is but her voice just like it hits like the right notes and it's just super calming so uh i hope you watch her videos i i basically watched every video that she put out um in the past couple months um and i've actually been watching a lot of competitive pokemon battling um, so I'm going to get into it later, but Pokemon is like one of my favorite IPs of all time. Um, and Envy is one that I've been watching recently. Uh, I watched him, uh, like several years ago when I played, I dabbled a little bit in competitive Pokemon. Um, but I'm back into watching him cause he too has a very calming nature about him. And I just like that he doesn't like overhype everything. Um, so those are kind of like three that I watch pretty consistently now, but honestly, a lot of the content that I watch is just like on the main page of YouTube as it comes up. Um, oh, who's the other guy that I was, that I'm just watching. I'm just getting into his stuff. It's like, uh, oh, does it start with an E? Um, shoot. He's a cooking channel, uh, but he's really good. Um, Ethan, Ethan Schlebowski, Ethan Schlebowski. Oh my God. That's a hard name to say. Um, his content is really good. So if you're into cooking stuff, he has a couple series. He does like uh, restaurant food to a low calorie version of the food. Um, he also does like restaurant food to uh, making it quicker kind of thing. But he also just does like random cooking videos. But he goes into the science a bit about uh, cooking and like makes it all about like equations but not like math equations so it's like one part acidity one part you know fat and so we'll take like for one part acidity for like an aioli or whatever you may want to take like a vinegar or a lime juice or a or a, you know i don't know i'm forgetting the stuff now but like for fats you may want sour cream you may want uh mayo you may want avocado and he kind of goes through it like that and it's kind of an interesting way to look at cooking so i've been really enjoying his stuff too and then lastly, favorite food. Oh my God, that is so hard to pick. There are so many good ones. Um, at least for this question to make it kind of easier to answer, I'm going to say pizza. You can't go wrong with a good pizza. There's literally like so many other things I could say right now. Um, but I'm sure if we do a, a food related uh, Q and A video, I'm sure you guys will learn more about my food tastes in that. <laughs> Next up, coming in from Domi Jodo, this one getting a little bit more serious here. How has the pandemic affected your life? Well, I'm assuming that it's affected everyone differently. Uh, but for me, um, so I've been working from home for about a year. Um, fortunately, it has not affected my job life that much. I'm able to remote into my work computer, so 
uh, because all of our storage is located at the station that I work at, uh, I'm able to remote in and access all that information. No problem. It's a little bit slower, obviously, because I'm working on my work computer from my home computer over a network. So it's not the greatest. Um, but it really hasn't put in a, a damper on my work life at all. I actually prefer it. I actually really like working from home. I know that there's some people who obviously like the routine of actually going out socializing, but I'm a very intrinsic person. Um, intrinsic? No. Introverted. That's the word I was looking for, which a lot of you might not think. I know we were talking about this a little bit uh, the other night on stream and people were very surprised to hear that I'm a very introverted person. But yes, it is true. I'm a very introverted person. So I actually do. Uh, I do enjoy <laughs> um, yeah, working from home. Uh, and that means that if I, you know, right when I'm done from work, I can just go right into YouTube mode or playing video games or whatever it is. There's not like a, a big transition of like the, the commute home, you know? So, um, but then on top of that, what is it affected or how has it affected me? Uh, it sparked this channel, um, because I was basically bored at home, um, during the pandemic, during like transitioning from working at a station to uh, working from home, I got kind of bored. And honestly, beyond just like getting bored, because I've tried to start up a couple YouTube channels before I started up um, the the one that's most mem memorable is I tried to start up a um, movie review channel, um, which didn't pan out. You know, I didn't know enough about video production back then. This is uh, a while ago. Um, but one of the one of the goals with this channel that I wanted to do before, I, you know, I didn't have any viewers. I think I had a sub count of like, I don't know, maybe a hundred. But that was because I was putting out video. Like I said, I was putting out like movie reviews. So I had a little bit of numbers, but those people probably didn't carry over to who's watching now, obviously. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to improve on with this channel was just my ability to speak. Um, and that's not to say like I have a, a stutter or a speech impediment or anything like that. Um, it, it really just came down to like literally learning how to hold a conversation. As, as I said before, I am a very, uh, introverted person. Um, and when it came to having conversations with people, I never felt like I was the best. I feel like I'm okay if I'm being asked questions, but when it comes to offering up, uh, something to a conversation or asking questions, I didn't feel like I was great at that. And, uh, while, you know, talking to a camera is not exactly helping with that. It just helps with overall thought processing, I guess, like, just like, just like anything, if you don't use it, you lose it. And that was something that, uh, I felt, um, I needed to work on a little bit, you know, it might seem kind of silly to say you need to work on your, your speech, but, uh, I don't know. That's for me. That's how I felt. I was, I guess a little bit self-conscious about that. I don't know. Um, and I do feel that I've gotten a little bit better, uh, especially now that I've been streaming more, uh, more consistently, but also to a, uh, a bigger audience. And I, you know, thank you guys for that. Obviously without you guys watching, I wouldn't have an audience. Um, but being able to basically talk straight for four hours is while it might not seem beneficial, it is practice. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that kind of answers that, uh, next up from DJ Tanner, uh, the video game that has most impacted my life. This is an easy one. Uh, it's easily the Pokemon series. Not, it, it's not going to be one individual game. I guess if you had to pin it down, it would be Pokemon blue. Um, but it's the video guys. It's the video game series as a whole. Um, I got Pokemon blue back when I was very, very, very young. It was probably the, the first year or two it came out. So I must've been either four five or six, somewhere around there. Um, I don't have a lot of memories of actually like getting it and playing it, but I do know that it was my first game. I mean, I remember general things about the game, but like, I'm pretty sure I got it for Christmas. I don't actually remember that. Um, I don't actually remember the first starter that I chose. I believe it was, uh, Squirtle, um, because I'm assuming I would have wanted to play the character that was on the game cartridge. Um, but, uh, Pokemon basically carried me through my childhood. That's how I met all my friends. Literally in fifth grade, I remember uh, two of my best friends. They were my best friends all through um, from fifth grade all the way to graduating. Uh, literally, we met because we were playing Pokemon underneath the computer desks uh, that we had in our classroom during our, our silent reading time. We would literally bring 
the uh, the old um, not game informers, but they were like the game guides. I forgot what they're actually called. Um, but we would bring those, and our teacher she looked through them and she was like, oh, "Okay, yeah, there's words in there, so I guess that counts as reading." So we'd be like, "Score, grab our Game Boy Advances, or I think it was it might have been SPs at that time. Go under the table." Because, of course, you know, she's not going to think anything suspicious of that and just go play like Pokemon Ruby or Emerald at that time. Um, oh, yeah, we had a, we had a lot of good memories uh, playing Pokemon. But, yeah, just like, you know, trading Pokemon. I never got like the uh, the Pokedex completed. That was never me. I always wanted to uh, battle. Um was never very good at it and then you know when college came around i didn't really have i didn't play like on the handhelds but i started playing like pokemon showdown and just getting like itching my pokemon itch then every once in a while i still come back into it like right now like i was saying when i was talking about what channels i watch i'm on kind of a pokemon kick right now i kind of want to do a little bit um but uh yeah pokemon is has for sure been the most influential video game in my life you know played i didn't play cards i definitely collected the cards but most of the relationships i had uh in my early years was because of pokemon um it was a uh it was a phenomenon to say the least um and i think that that's the case with a lot of people um especially like when pokemon go came out oh my god it's like the first time you've ever talked to a stranger on the street like for a week or two you know you just go up to people and be like Hey, you, you play Pokemon and you spark up a conversation with someone that you never would have talked to in the first place. Uh, yeah, it was it was just absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Easily, easily changing my life. I don't know where my life would be if I didn't start playing Pokemon. And as for the last question here, this one's going to get uh, this is definitely the deepest question of the bunch. But I thought that it was a actually really good question. And uh, I actually had an answer like right off the top of my head because we actually we talked about this a little bit uh on stream the other night. So coming in from Soybeans, the question is, what song describes your life right now? And like I said, this is one that I didn't really have to think about a lot. Uh, it's a song that I listen to quite often, and I don't know that it, it directly answers this question, but uh, hopefully it's it's close enough and will kind of give you an idea of, of what I'm thinking. So the song in question is called The Search by NF. Uh, if you've never heard of NF, uh, he's a rapper. He sounds his he has a very similar sound to Eminem, um, but his songs are very much uh, he writes as he would a story. Um, for me, it's it's very simple to follow. Um, I find that a lot of rappers, I just like I can't even tell what they're saying. It's just more like the beat that I like. But uh, with NF, I can actually like understand what he's saying, and um, I'm gonna read one of his verses. Um, and then just give kind of my quick thoughts about it. Um, Cause I, I think that it's very important for a lot of people to hear. And uh, this is easily the verse that uh, gets to me the most. So here we go. See, we've all got something that we trapped inside that we try to suffocate, you know, hoping it dies, try to hold it underwater, but it always survives. Then it comes up out of nowhere, like an evil surprise. Then it hovers over you to tell you millions of lies. You don't relate to that. Must not be as crazy as I am. The point I'm making is the mind is a powerful place and what you feed it can affect you in a powerful way. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, but it's not always safe. Just hang with me. This will only take a moment, okay? This is the important part, though. Just think about it for a second. If you look at your face every day when you get up and think you'll never be great, you'll never be great. Not because you're not, but the hate will always find a way to cut you up and murder your faith. Uh, wow, I got I got chills. <laughs> um, literally. Um, that, the last half of that verse uh, really speaks to me. Um, and I think it's something that a, a lot of people don't think about is that literally if, if you tell, if you're telling yourself that you're never going to be great, why would you, why would you do anything to promote yourself, put yourself in a better place? You're just going to like, at that point, you're your own obstacle. And there's already so many obstacles that you have to climb over in order to it's not necessarily like being great, like financially or like not statistically. That's not what I'm going for, but like your status, it, you know, whether you're looking for more followers on Twitter or you're looking for that bigger paycheck bonus or, you know, you're looking to be the best at Call of Duty or whatever it is. There's so many more obstacles than you need than to just like put yourself as one of those obstacles. So it just getting up and saying, yeah, I'm going to be great or I'm going to learn one thing that's going to make me in a better place at the end of the day than I was at the beginning of the day. 
man, that is super important, and I don't think enough people are doing that, and, you know, I hope that, uh, you know, I might not say it directly in my streams or my videos, but one of the things that I've, like, that I've personally been trying to be better at, and hopefully I'm kind of, like, imprinting on you guys, is that, you know, just just be positive, man. Like, it, this life's too short to be negative about stuff that you don't have to be negative about. Um, but always just trying to better yourself. You know, like one of the things that uh, personally, you know, something that came up. Well, I guess it's kind of personal, but it's coming up with this channel is that like a lot of my previous videos and even videos that come up now, but um, past videos, you know, back when the game first came out. Uh, no, of course, I'm not going to get all the information right. The game had just came out. I was still learning and I'm still learning. Like, <laughs> you know, if, if we go back to the video I just put out Monday about the pick order of Stand By Me, um, there was a viewer uh, by the name of OJ. It's, it's the pinned comment. He actually went through because I said I'm not super familiar with Ning Wong. Um, so there were a couple constellations I weren't sure of. And he actually went through and, you know, correct me on why I should have prioritized some higher and some lower. You know, it's just something that I learned every day. You got to learn something. You're not going to be perfect every time. And if you're afraid to put yourself out there until that time, you are perfect. By that point, you've missed the boat. So, you know, that's something that they, they tell you a lot when you're learning like business. If you're waiting for that perfect opportunity, whether it's, you know, you want if you want to start a YouTube channel or you want to start your own business, don't wait until you get whatever it, it is you need to get there just start because if you're waiting until that time that you're perfect that you know everything you're never going to start um and that's kind of like where where this verse led me you know like every day when you get up i think you'll never be great you'll never be great not because you're not but the hate will always find a way to cut you up and murder your faith and that just that speaks to me so uh, might not be the song that directly, uh, describes my life or anything, but it's definitely the song that, uh, means the most to me right now. Um, also it's just a kick-ass song. <laughs> just listen to it. If you want to get hyped up, it's actually really good. All right, guys. So that is going to wrap up this first edition of questions and answers. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video, learning a little bit about me or just kind of listening. Like I said, I'm going to treat this at least this edit kind of like a podcast. It's not going to have a lot of uh, cuts, hopefully, as long as I don't have to cut stuff out. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys did like the format. If you did, you know, let me know. Give the video a thumbs up or just uh, let me know if you liked uh, the style of content. If you guys did and, uh, you know, yeah, if you guys like the content, we'll, uh, we'll keep doing these. Uh, it's easy enough to produce these, especially at times where, you know, I don't have access to the game or something like that. It's a nice little way to freshen things up potentially we'll see um but yeah you know we're putting this out because there's kind of a lull period Zhao's coming out tomorrow or technically tonight if you're watching this when this video comes out um we will be pulling Zhao on youtube tonight or on his release day wednesday the what is it wednesday the third wednesday the third we will be pulling him um i'm gonna be going live around 5 p.m est right here on youtube pulling around 6 p.m. EST and then from there our plans are kind of open-ended because I don't currently know if we're going to be able to convert the like hurricane seeds into the new jade seeds that hasn't actually been confirmed as of yet um so if we can't we're probably going to be farming that new boss because I really need those jade seeds because I have everything else to ascend out it's just that so our plans are going to determine on that um once we're done there we will be hopping over to twitch and streaming for the rest of the night uh but with all that out of the way that's all i got guys hopefully you did enjoy if you want to see some more content from me you can head over to my twitch page twitch.tv slash xjazze we do stream there three times a week monday wednesday friday and before that we stream right here on youtube so you can go ahead click that red subscribe button to support us right here like the video if you liked it and click that notification bell that way you never miss a video and if you want to join our community over on Discord, link, as always, down in the description below. But guys, that's all I got for this one. Hopefully you did enjoy, and hopefully you guys pull your zhaos. See y'all in the next video. Peace.